Well, welcome back to Night Food Holdings, a channel redefining hospitality through AI-powered robotics and strategic acquisitions. Joining to give us a high-level overview of the robotics, the implementation, a little bit of his history as well. We have uh, Sonny, the CRO, joining us first and foremost. Welcome, sir. Hey, again. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Yeah, such a pleasure. Today. Come on. Yeah, now, first and foremost, I wouldn't mind if you could roll back a little bit. Maybe tell us what led up to that aha moment. How did you kind of get involved with uh, Night Food Holdings? Okay, yeah, it's actually uh, fairly... Uh, Interesting how I got to the uh, night for holdings and robotics. I mean, my background is basically business development and finance with experience across with health clubs, restaurants, and IoT smart devices, folks more opti optimizing facilities operations. Really what happens during COVID-19 shutdown, and uh, everybody's going and getting food, scrambling for food, trying to find food, food options, or kind of limit it to, you know, dine, fine dining going out is kind of very limiting. And I learned the, the, the operational fragility in these uh, sectors, especially in food service, that's when I say, aha, okay, this is, makes sense, that automation should should come in, help out during this, this like fragile situations, right? And then I ran into a robotics company at the, at the moment and it kind of got understanding what they're doing in the food space. And that company was not what, what I'm doing right now, but it's, it's a different company. But at the time, the basic kind of taught me a lot lesson about why the the uh, the labor uh, inconsistency was a major issue at that time, and moving forward now, the labor cost is a, it's another uh, struggle for it. So, and, and, and because the inconsistent labor, there there goes to the consistency of operations too, in food quality and the customer experience. That all goes along with it. So that's when I say, okay, this makes sense, and I got involved with the robotics, and then iFood came along, and we decided to uh, combine forces to do something in this space. Yeah, definitely appreciate the insight there. Do you want to talk about the culinary the culinary robots themselves, kind of how, what you're specializing in uh, and kind of how they're working for you today? Yeah, the culinary robot, we're, our main focus right now, it's a food production robot. So basically it's autonomous robot that can, it's intelligent, that can help you to take all the mundane hard work away, repetitive, uh, labor intensive. And it, you, usually those require uh, a longer training period to really master that's the role we're actually helping out in the kitchen space. Um, mainly these are stir frying um, type of activities and uh, saute and also mixings, very labor intensive. And usually these, these type of cooking oftentimes can cause injury as well over time, repetitive motion for, for, for the staff. Um, so these robots actually, what it, what it do is basically they can cook up to 15 pounds of food about four to eight minutes, okay? It's a, it's a it's it's consist it's good for high volume production that's really for or mass production is really great for it but it also allows portion control so this also helps you reduce food waste to manage food waste much much more uh, more precise with it and what what's unique about the system too it also does does precision in terms goes to um, granular management of seasoning both dry season seasoning and also wet seasoning. So it allows you to basically to control how much salt goes in the food that you're putting to, how much sugar you put into, how much uh, how much oil you use for for the type of dish you're cooking. So it's really helpful in in in, in environment like uh, uh, allergen sensitive um, type of customers or or our area like schools for where uh, kids nutrition is really big in, in certain schools. They're looking for that. So chefs can actually custom these type of menus, even though with the same type of menu, they can reduce or increase type of seasoning required, uh, micronutrition type thing. Yeah, no, it's very interesting to say the least. And I wouldn't mind getting a better understanding. I know you guys are just kind of building out some pilots with some customers or uh, people you're working in in the pilot programs. You want to talk about um, what sectors those are specifically in um, and just kind of where you're starting to see, uh, you know, some demand? Yeah, in a broad stroke, we're actually targeting multiple segments because food service goes not just for restaurants, also for hotels, assisted living hospitals, schools, right type type of uh, uh, institutions. So our focus right now, primary focus is going to assisted livings, um, selective uh, private schools type of thing, and retail outlets with food services, as well as restaurants and hotels. These are the segments we're going after. We're doing a couple of testing right now with a, with a food stall type of operation in a couple of uh, um, retail like 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 kind of kind of like Whole Foods were to serve like hot food plates, not Whole Foods. I'm saying example ways. Um, so we're working some outlets like that at this moment to pilot out to see how it help them in their food output and operations and consistency and quality goes. 
And uh, with this technology you guys have, how big do you uh, see the market opportunity being and what should investors pay attention to? Uh, the market size, actually, this is about $30 billion markets worldwide, okay? For the U.S., I would say another probably $15 billion industry-wide in terms of growth. And because we're not attacking just one segment in one industry, it's a it's sub-segment of multiple industries we're penetrating as long as there's the required food production. And they're looking for uh, more healthier, or more, more better management in food operations. Yeah, absolutely. I definitely appreciate all the insight today as we pass it off to the viewers. We'd love to know what you think in that comment section and consider subscribing as news catalysts come down the wire like this. Of course, we'll bring it to you here. But on that, as always, we look forward to catching you in the next one.